I want to address some questions that new believers in particular, but not only, might have in regards to the Old and the New Covenant and the confusion between them. First of all, I'd like to read from Hebrews chapter 7, verse 22. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. I want us to look at how this happened and what does it mean. First of all, I like to read in Hebrews chapter 9, starting with verse 16. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all, while the testator liveth. I read in Matthew chapter 26, starting with verse 27, And he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. I also read in Galatians chapter 4, starting with verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. I also read in Hebrews chapter 9, starting with verse, no, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 7, starting with verse 11. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under if the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not, the, and not be called after the old order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man give attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning the priesthood. How did our priest of the new covenant, the Lord Jesus Christ, change the law? I want to read his words from Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 6 starting with verse 38 For ye have heard that it had been said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth but I say unto you that ye resist not evil but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. We also know very well that the Lord Jesus Christ covered the law of adultery. And he said, if you just lust after a woman, look at, look at a woman to lust after her, you already committed adultery with her in your heart. And the Lord said that if you hate your brother or if you call him Raka, only you are in danger of hellfire. Dear friends, I also want to read in Galatians chapter 5. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised 
that is a debtor to do the whole law. Dear friends, don't be deceived by those who try to to steal you into bondage again, into the bondage of the old covenant, into the bondage of the law of Moses that was given on Mount Sinai. Nobody in the whole world keeps that whole law. Anybody who say they keep the law of Moses, they're lying. Do not be deceived by them. I continue reading. Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. Ye are fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. It did run well. Who did hinder you that he should not obey the truth? This persuasion come and not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have, I have confidence in you through the Lord that he will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubled you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer, suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would, they were even cut off which trouble you, for brethren, it have been called unto liberty. Only not use liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, but if he bite and devour one another, take heed that he be not consumed of one another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and he shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, for the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one, one to the other, so that he cannot do the things that he would. But if be led by the spirit, he are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murderers, drunkenness, revilings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you, I tell you before as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. My the Lord Jesus Christ bless you.